So many people are watching the crypto and Web 3.0 space looking for game-changing technology that can help bring about blockchain mass adoption. We've seen an explosion of use cases for blockchain surrounding decentralized finance or DeFi and also NFTs. But one of the main criticisms I hear about Web 3.0 and blockchain is there's all this hype that's really just based off financial speculation and that there's not really much utility for the technology outside of these use cases. But today I want to talk about a Web 3.0 trend that has real utility that doesn't require any kind of financial speculation to gain adoption. This is a technology that can definitely stand on its own and has a lot of users right now. So I'm going to talk about that today as a blockchain developer who works with this technology on a daily basis. I'm going to explain exactly what you need to know and how to use it. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step-by-step -step start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about this blockchain use case. It doesn't really require any financial speculation. So like I was saying before, you know, we've seen things like NFTs absolutely explode onto the scene over the past year and change. And, you know, while the digital collectibles use case is cool for NFTs, we're really just scratching the surface on what you can do with non-fungible tokens themselves powered by smart contracts in the blockchain because you can represent value with them. You know, this can extend to any type of digital ownership like real estate, intellectual property, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And today I want to talk about another use case for NFTs that doesn't directly involve financial speculation and has a lot of users right now. So that's what the Proof of Attendance Protocol, or POAP. So what is that? Well, it's a protocol that runs in the blockchain that's powered by smart contracts where people can get NFTs if they attend some type of event, whether that's a physical in-person event or some sort of online gathering. If they show up at this and then they actually prove that they were there, they get this NFT that then they can hold you know, in their wallet that has a lot of big benefits that I'm going to talk about here in a minute. And so you can think of it kind of like ticketing in reverse. So if you have to purchase a ticket to prove that you are able to attend an event, you know, this is the exact opposite. Once you attend the event, you can prove that you were there by getting this, you know, digital item that actually reflects that. And so we have early models of this already in the Web 2.0 world. Like think about, you know, the Foursquare app where you could go to a physical location and then check in and then prove that you did that on the app and keep track of all your check-ins and might unlock some other benefits later. Or also with like geotagging. So like if you're on Instagram and you go take a picture of somewhere, then you can prove that you were there with the picture of the location and then you can add your geotag to the top of the photo and then you have that memory saved for life. But instead of just having a photograph to prove that you're there, some sort of like, you know, centralized server authenticate your location, you can actually prove it with blockchain and then you keep a record of that, you know, with smart contracts to where you can hold this in your wallet, you know, forever. And so that has some specific benefits like, you know, concealing your identity. If you don't want to give over any information at an event, all you have to do is sign a message with your wallet, you know, in order to receive your proof of attendance. And then you can get that proof of attendance without, you know, having to give any information away. OK, so how does it work? So first and foremost, let's talk about it from the user's perspective, like somebody who's actually going to show up to an event to get one of these proof of attendance protocol tokens or POAPs. All right, so they first and foremost need some sort of blockchain wallet. So let's say they have a MetaMask wallet or maybe some sort of, you know, app on their phone that, you know, lets them hold crypto or just, you know, manage their digital identity in some way. So they first and foremost need that, okay? And then when they go to an event, how do they prove that they were there? Well, there's a few different ways you can do this. Um, let's just talk about physical events for a second. So, you know, they could have a QR code that you could scan at the event, prove that you were there, all right? They can also hand out unique cards, uh, or unique QR codes so that you can, you know, have a one-time use type situation so you couldn't just like screenshot the QR code and take it to somebody else. But if only if you have that unique piece of information, you, then you have the ability to claim, you know, your attendance. So another way is a unique, you know, link, just like a hyperlink on the web. And that could be a generalized link for everybody to use. Maybe that expires after a certain amount of time once you're at the event, or maybe a one-off link that each person can use so they can't share it with somebody else. And then you could also do something like if you don't have the ability to scan or click a link, you could have just like a secret word or a secret phrase. And again, this can be generalized or specific to each person who's there. But the whole idea is that in order to claim the token, you have to have access to some special piece of information to prove that you are at this event. And that's the only way that you can get the token. And when you have that, you can add it to your wallet. And most of the time, you can just do it totally for free. All right, so let's talk about like the actual use cases for this. Like, why does anybody care about this? Why would you want to do with blockchain in the first place? So again, let's break it up into two different categories. So one is like for physical events, and then let's also talk about for virtual events, okay? So let's start with the first one, because that's that's the most interesting is basically like the ability to show up to a place and then prove that you were there, and then you get this sort of badge that you can hold for the long term, okay? So we see this type of thing already happening with, uh, you know, 
event tickets. So we saw this past year where people got, you know, commemorative NFTs for attending a Super Bowl. Okay, so we're already seeing this type of thing happen. This could merge sort of back into the proof of attendance use case where you attend a highly memorable event like the Super Bowl, and then you get a commemorative token for doing that. And I know I was talking about a use case that doesn't have financial speculation tied to it, but there potentially is some of this where you actually have a collectible that can hold value over time. Like imagine paying all this money for a Super Bowl ticket and then it actually holds its value in digital form of the NFT that you can then go sell on a marketplace. So there is some financialization to this, but there is the ability to sort of tap in the network of people who have already done this to give other benefits. Like you could already connect with people who attended the same event as you. You could automatically create online communities around this where you could communicate with them through a chat room or some other means and we share photos. If you prove that you attended an event like this, then you could automatically unlock all kinds of new benefits like maybe future discounts to maybe if you attended the first event, then you get discounts towards the next one the next one you can get access to you know early airdrops for projects just for attending events early and it's another big benefit of these is that you can actually you know claim these to develop some sort of online reputation okay so if you're able to go to multiple things like this and actually you know accrue proof of attendance protocol tokens then let's say you're in a situation where you want to uh you know apply for a job that requires that you did something you know, we, we see this all the time, especially people getting like their first job or maybe they're applying to university or something. They want to see a community service hours or something. Well, you could prove that with this uh, and automate that process completely with blockchain. So another use case is like, uh, let's talk about employers who want to hire people who are proficient with Web 3.0. Well, one of the most common things is to say, hey, prove it. Like, show me some sort of address that has an on-chain reputation uh, that you actually know what you're doing here because that's at the end of the day, people who are hiring for 3.0 want people to really understand the space. And if you have a wallet full of proof of attendance protocol tokens, then that's another, you know, good example. And so another application this definitely extends to the online world because, you know, this is not just limited to physical events where you can show up and scan a QR code, you know, enter in a secret word or phrase or click a link. Okay, you can do all that stuff online too. So let's say that you wanted to have you know, people have a proof of attendance for some sort of big launch event online. So you can use PO apps in this case. So let's say uh, like live streaming, for example, like I do a lot of live streams on this channel. Like one idea that we could do is basically have some sort of thing where you prove that you attended a live stream. And then over time, you could accumulate PO apps for every single stream that you attend. And you can start to have, you know, incentives with creators there. So there's, there's lots of tools here that creators could use to integrate and build community among their fans. And that can go back to the whole use cases of like airdropping people uh, who, you know, attended something the most, or maybe you had like, you know, a certain subscriber account when you cross a thousand subscribers or something like that with your first social media account, maybe you had a proof of attendance protocol or a PO app for people who were there when that happened or any milestone that you can possibly think of. You could give these to your audience that could unlock all these other benefits like I'm talking about. So let's talk about what some of these benefits could be. This is not just for the content creator use case but for anybody who gets a PO app. What could they potentially do with it? So one benefit is uh, POAP weighted polls or voting. So let's say that you had a community, all right, and you wanted people to vote on something. So this is really common in the DAO space where like you have to hold a governance token in order to, you know, um, you know, vote on something, right? But the, the problem with the DAO is you can very easily just purchase these governance tokens and then you have a bigger, you know, say in the actual election process. So, you know, with a proof of attendance protocol, if you can make it to where it's it's more unique for each person and they actually have earning these things by, you know, going to events that prove that they have participated in the community over time, then that's a way where you can get people to have a, a higher sway in somebody who has actual skin in the game rather than just buying their way into an ecosystem. So you can have uh, POAP weighted polls or votes where if you want to make community decisions, you can give people more clout or more weight who have, you know, attended more events and connected more POAPs. Another thing that comes out of the box with POAPs is actually the ability to organize raffles for your holders, okay? So you can see that over at poap.fun. So basically, if people are already a part of the community and have, uh, you know, uh, accrued these tokens and they can automatically get entered into a raffle without having to sign up for the first place and maybe they get some sort of benefit uh, by a random draw. And so those are some of the things that come just out of the box for free on the proof of attendance protocol. But because this is powered by smart contracts, okay, it's open for developers to create any kind of integration they want to on top of it. And I'll show you some details on how to get started developing with POAP here in a minute. But let's talk about some, you know, other use cases uh, that can easily be built on top of this. Like I was saying before, you know, you could have this type of thing where uh, you're easily able to just do airdrops based on people who already have these. So taking a snapshot of those people, if you're going to launch a new token, all you have to do is actually just, you know, create some sort of Merkle tree 
that proves that address within that. If they want to do an airdrop claim and you instantly can get a snapshot of that with the POAP holders, okay? I've actually got a video on my channel on how to do airdrops at Merkle Trees if you want to learn how to do that. And then, you know, building communities around people who have specific POAP. So, you know, you know, taking a snapshot of holders like I was just talking about, but also doing things where you actually take that data and connect people. So like inviting them into a chat. So if you could build some sort of, you know, maybe social media application around people who automatically are grouped into special, uh, you know, subgroups or subreddits or, you know, Discord chats or whatever based on things they actually have in their wallet. Instead of like algorithmically finding their data on a social network, you could just pull in their data from different places on the blockchain and then instantly connect those people together whenever they, you know, have a have a wallet connected so they can interact with one another, maybe share experiences from this online event or just because you know that they like the same types of things. They might give you tips and tricks on, you know, some cool thing that's going to happen down the future that you might also be interested in. There's a huge way for brands to get connected with this, to advertise to people who want to see that type of thing as well. Really, the possibilities are limitless because there's so much information out there on the blockchain that you can just scrape it and then pull it together to create new, better versions of what we already experience in the Web 2.0 right now that's siloed inside these, you know, big databases. All right, so let's talk about how to actually use POOP step by step. So let's start off with the use case from just claiming a, a token. So if you go to poapp.delivery, okay, you can look up different events that are issuing poaps. Okay. So of course you need a web 3.0 wallet uh, in order to take advantage of these, but you can just see different uh, events here and then go to claim your poap. All right. And that's how you do it. And of course you need to be at these events, but this is how you can find uh, you know, events that are going to do this. So you can also just look for other web 3.0 events that you might be interested in and see if they have uh, proof of attendance protocol tokens associated with this. I mean, there's probably going to be clearly advertising the event itself. If not, you could just ask somebody. And again, this doesn't always have to be an in-person event. If there's some sort of online thing, maybe it's a hackathon. We've seen a lot of virtual hackathons lately. Then you might be able to snag a POAP token there. All right, so what if you want to create a POAP token yourself so that other people can claim it? Like you want to host an event and then have uh, POAPs be a part of this. Well, you can go to uh, the POAP homepage at poap.xyz. Okay, and then you can go to creating your first POAP here under the Why Use It section. Okay, so there's some guidelines that are going to walk you on how to do this. But basically, what you do uh, is you have to submit an application. So, so you have to understand, like, uh, with this actual protocol itself, you know, it's powered by smart contracts in the blockchain. In order to actually, you know, issue these POAP tokens, you have to use that specific protocol, hence the proof of attendance protocol. So uh, you have to apply through this to create one in the first place. So you you just talk about what you are creating. You fill out this application. Uh, talk about whether it's a virtual drop or whether it's actually going to be in a certain location, physical location, okay? You give it the start date, you give it the end date, the expiry date, so that they can't uh, mint after that. That's one great thing is you can help, you know, prevent fraud in this case by limiting the time range people can do it at. Other information like a website, uh, some sort of template. You can just choose from some starter templates here, all right? You can see past uh, events that have happened and just start from there. Maybe you used one yourself and you just want to repeat the same thing. Okay, then you want to add some sort of artwork, all right, and then an edit code. So basically, this is going to let you make any further updates to the template. So in order to do this, you have to provide an email address. So there will be some uh, information you have to give over if you're going to be uh, the creator of the event. Of course, you can use a one, one-off one email address if you don't want to use your personal email for that. Uh, then how many mint links do you need? So this is going to say how many codes you want. So you can keep this scarce if you're just trying to do a one-off or if you want to have, you know, maybe 10 people. I'm only going to give out 10 tokens and you could have 10, you know, codes maybe for this specific thing. And you can also tell whether it's a private drop or not. So you have to save that, go through the application process, but that's the starting point uh, to creating your first event. All right, so what if you're a developer and you want to build with the proof of attendance protocol? Well, you can go to poapp.directory, okay, and you can browse the top. Uh, you can see, let's see here, uh, on build, okay, click on the build. And that's going to give you the developer documentation on how you can get started building your first application with POAP. All right, so that's an overview of the proof of attendance protocol or POAP and, you know, what it is and why it's important. Okay, so again, this is a use case for Web 3.0 and blockchain technology. It doesn't really directly have to do with financial speculation. Of course, it's going to be integrated to have some sort of financial aspect to it. But even with that incentive out of the picture, this is a valid use case that could be used to make a lot more uh, things efficient, you know, and the incentive here is to be able to prove things trustlessly and trans in a transparent way with blockchain technology. So I hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people learn about blockchain. And if you're as fast with the technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you went to the next step or hey, 
Maybe you don't take a master shortcut entirely. I can show to master blockchain step by step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I felt people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.